decade where India was an emerging opportunity for venture capital. I started my firm in India in 2006. So for almost a decade, uh, really this region was more about building a investor base and an LP base. But in the last couple of years, things are changing. Um, whether it's, uh, we talked about Indonesia, whether it's the whole Southeast Asia MENA region, the way it's changing, um, it started with some of the companies that we were funding in India wanting to expand into markets. And before, that meant expanding into US and then maybe later into Europe. So that was sort of when they felt they arrived, right? But today, that narrative has changed significantly. So Indian companies believe that, uh, and by the way, we primarily, uh, majority of the time, invest into companies that have India as a core domestic market. But what is happening with these companies is, as they are scaling, uh, their aspirations are changing, and their confidence to reach across has uh, changed dramatically in the last few years. So we have many companies that look at the MENA region, um, they look at the whole Southeast Asia, and they don't think they need to go that far to a completely different market. This feels uh, easier, familiar for them to be able to build bridges and, and uh, uh, access uh, their products and uh, services. So that's sort of what uh, brought us into doing more with our companies to support them in this region. Uh, we haven't done any investments that are you know, stationed here, incubated here, and uh, we don't have an invest, investment team base here. But I can see that over the next decade that we can do collaborations with people who are already here. And maybe the reverse of, you know, it's democratized today. You could start a company here and sell into India. And there are companies we are seeing that are doing that from Singapore and from other regions. So I see a lot more of those kind of opportunities emerging. And so to build those collaborations is what keeps bringing me back here. To just emphasize your point, um, yesterday Oyo landed in Dubai. Yes. Uh, Oyo is one of the largest or uh, of the hottest young Budget. unicorns yes. of India. Yes. They just landed here. And Zomato, I'm sure a lot of you have used it, started international operations out of Dubai. Yes. Yeah, so that's a good example of uh, how Dubai is being used as a, a global base. Chris, you are one of the early investors in a company called Kareem. And Kareem, I won't ask you the question if Uber is buying Kareem yet, but... How about ask me if Kareem is buying Uber? Yeah. <laughs> For you to answer. But what I was trying to get to is, Kareem also uses Dubai as a great base to be in, I think, 20-odd countries, if I'm correct. So is, so is there some insights that you can give on how they thought of this as a base and how this became the center of their world? Yeah, and they didn't actually start here. I won't mention the city they did start in, but they couldn't find funding there, um, and it's in the GCC. Um, but but I think that that a key um, development in Dubai in the sort of 20 years that I've been coming here is that now you can hire the best talent in the world and convince them to move to Dubai. And it isn't a big stretch. It's on the list of top 10 cities of almost everybody. And so if you need the best chief marketing officer because you're competing, you may be a regional player, but you're competing with the biggest global players, you can take them from London and move them to Dubai. You can take them from Mumbai and move them to Dubai or Silicon Valley or Singapore and move them to Dubai without much friction. And that is a transformative development here because it means that not only can you be competing with global players in this region from Dubai, but you can be competing in the globe from Dubai. Logan, you know, you've been coming here for a while, looked at this part of the world, mostly from an LP perspective, probably raising capital. What do you see? Is it the global crossing of that too? Uh, I've been coming here for over 10 years now, uh, and it's amazing how it's evolved. I think uh, increasingly in the last, call it three to five years, the ask from LPs has been, 
hey, you're investing outside of the region, you need to be looking at bringing companies back into the region, which, which for us is actually quite simple because we're enterprise tech investors in fintech. And so there are a number of partners that we work with here in Abu Dhabi uh, and Dubai from DIFC to uh, ADFG uh, and major banks and, and financial services firms that need innovation, uh, increasingly see uh, millennials on their retail business taking over the wealth and they need to cater to them in a Kareem-like fashion uh, or an Amazon-like experience. And so um, I think we're seeing increasing uh, desire to bring companies back into the region. Um, the key will be uh, having a local team. We do plan on setting up a local team here over the, the next year uh, because you need that support from a business development perspective uh, versus an IR perspective. And so I think uh, you know the opportunity has really evolved. I, I was looking at some data uh, last night and, and it appears that there's going to be a billion dollars invested by VCs in UAE uh, over around 50 companies uh, in 2018. And so that's an incredible stat and it's 600% plus growth uh, year over year uh, from earlier years. And, and so I, I think you're seeing more interesting opportunities here. Um, you know, I'm meeting with some tech stars companies this week and uh, certainly seeing other companies that might make sense for us to take from the region uh, into Europe and, and, and work broadly. Um, we also see opportunities in partnering with Dubai for reaching Southeast Asia, which is a major investment focus uh, for us as well. Is, this is probably a bit far from where you are in, you know, in the cold climes of Europe at the moment. What do you see from there? What brings you here? Do you see what we see? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, uh, this is uh, still one of my earlier trips uh, in my experience into this region. But uh, absolutely, I do see what uh, what would you see here. I've been supremely impressed by what. Uh, what's been de being developed here in Dubai. I think it's more than just uh, what we see outside. It's, it's beyond just infrastructure development. Um, it's beyond just capital, as you had mentioned previously. I think um, there is a lot of uh, creative, uh, good talent out here. Um, there is support from, from the government, as well as uh, local partners, investors, as well as uh, developers, and experienced entrepreneurs from Kareem, from Souk, uh, from, from many successful companies that have Derive from this region. Um, you know, uh, geographically, Dubai is uh, very enviously situated uh, as, as a bridge between Asia and the West and Europe. Uh, looking over this region from Stockholm, I think a previous panelist and, uh, and on the previous panel mentioned that, uh, especially in the Nordics, uh, where I am, uh, many companies are looking to expand into the US, but increasingly so, looking to go out to Asia. And uh, stopping over by Dubai, um, perhaps even looking at Dubai as a base from which to expand out into Asia is uh, certainly not out of the question. And I think there are a lot of um, uh, supportive elements here that can allow that to happen increasingly in the future. Uh, Chris, since you've been somebody who's invested early here and you have been coming here for a while, what are some of the reasons why this has happened? One was talent you mentioned. Is there other things which have made this happen? Well, there have been, there've been um, sort of unending and very well-funded efforts to support the ecosystem. If we were Jitex, you know, a number of years ago, we watched it grow. But, but if, you, if you go to um, Emirates Towers, or you see just lots of efforts to build ecosystems locally. Some of them have failed and some of them have paid off, but they've all created Aura that, that I think has helped this city. And I, I want to just, I know this is Dubai centric, but I think it's important to note that throughout the GCC, you've seen efforts, and many of them are quite collaborative, meaning that there's sort of an overall swirl that is creating more money into this ecosystem. And, and of course, you have on top of it a population base that is. 100% smartphone penetrated, most of them have data plans. The amount of time they're engaged with their device is extraordinary. And so the data that that generates and the commerce that that generates sets this region apart. But it also sort of, it, it, it allows for that, that global perspective, which I think creates good entrepreneurs. So 